Today we're going to be reviewing for your test over topic eight, which was our properties of addition and subtraction, um, rounding, estimating, and doing mental math. So you need to be in volume two and have your math book open to page 323 as we go through this quick review. Remember, as needed in the video, stop, press pause, and fill in as we go. This is a review, so there's not a lot of teaching, just a review and talk. I encourage you to reread on the left side of the of the line up here what they're reminding you of of the different types of properties before you do our activities. So for this um, activity, it says to write each missing number. So when I notice I see 18 plus something equals 18, I know that that has to be zero because it's the same answer or the same sum. 14 plus 16 plus 15 in parentheses, so we're hugging over here. And over here I see the 16 and the 15, but now I'm missing the 14. So they changed the grouping or they're using the associative property. Number three, I see something plus 13 equals 13 plus 17. Oh, this would be the commutative property where they're switching the add-ins around. On number four, 28 plus something plus 22. So my three numbers are 28 blank and 22. Over here I see 28 and 22, but there is 25 that's missing. So they're actually using the commutative property inside of the associative property. For the next problem, I see 62 plus 21 plus 0. Well, I'm going to get rid of that 0. I don't need that there. And so my only missing add-in is 21. And for number 6, I see 26 and 78. And here is my other add-in of 31. This is representing the associative property. Use 28 plus 34 to write an equation that shows the commutative property, that back and forth. So I'm going to say 78 plus 34 is the same as 34 plus 78. Okay, so that was a review of our properties. You do not need to do the bottom portion. We skipped that lesson for now. Go ahead and turn your page, just like I am. Actually, I'm going to open it. Oops, sorry. And go ahead and turn to page 324. And let's go ahead and go through our lesson here. So at the top here, you're going to see that we're going to be breaking apart our add-ins to add them up mentally. So let's go ahead and break apart our 50 into, 56 into 50 plus 6. So let's say 302 plus 50, which would be 352. And then 352 plus 6, which would give me a sum of 358. Okay, let's do number four and do the same thing. So let's break up 115 into 100 plus 10 plus 5. And now we're ready to go ahead and add up our numbers here. Let me zoom this in a little bit to make it easier. So that means I would take 689 and add my 100 first, which would give me 789. Then I'm going to take 789 and add the 10, so 799, and then 799 plus 5. And even if I counted up with this, I would know I would have to move into the hundreds and get to 804. If you feel like you need more practice, please continue to do numbers 2 and 3. On the next section, we're going to be talking about mentally subtracting. So on this one, we're going to go ahead and break apart if we would like to, or we can count backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, I'm actually going to go up. So I'm going to go 163 and try to get to 523. Now I know if I jump 400, that's going to put me at 563. Uh-oh, look, that's too many. So I cannot jump that way. So let's try a different way. Let's get start at 163. And let's try jumping 300. And that would get me to 463. Now let's jump 40 more. 
and that would get me to 500. And then if I go 20 more, that would get me to 523. So if I add those together, 300 plus 40 plus 20, I would come up here and get a sum, or I'm sorry, a difference of 360. Okay, now remember, you can just line up your numbers and subtract also. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Let's start at 125 on our number line, and we're going to get to 282. Okay, so if I add 100 to this, let's jump 100, I would land at 225. Okay, I could continue to jump small groups of 10, or let's go ahead and try a jump of 30. 225 plus 30 would get me 255. Oh, I'm getting close. Let's do a group of 20, and that would land me, and I'm sorry, I'm writing up here at 275. Oh, I'm really close. And let's count from 275 to 82, so that would be 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82. I'm going to go up 7. Now I'm going to put together my numbers and my difference would be 157, okay? Remember, you can use lots of different strategies for this, but this is just one easy way to start going up, okay? All right, let's go down and talk about rounding. So let's review our rounding rules. 374 to the nearest 10 and to the nearest 100, and you might need to get another piece of notebook paper in order to do this, but let's go ahead. I'm gonna make my vertical number line and I'm going to go to the tens place first, which is the 70. So I'm going to go from 370 to 380. My halfway point, which is 375. I put where 374 is. Oh, it's closer to this. So that means it would be rounded to 370. Then let's do the same thing for our hundreds. I'm going to round to the three or to the hundred. So I have 300 and 400. Halfway is 350. So where does 374 fall? Somewhere here. That means we would go up. So it would be 400. Okay. Let's do the same for number two. So I have 848. I'm going to make my vertical number line nearest tens. So I go there, I have 40. So don't forget your hundreds, 840, 850, because 40, 50. Halfway through is 845. Place our number, 848, which is closer to 850. And let's go ahead and round to the hundreds. So make our vertical number line again. Hundreds place, I have eight, so 800. I count up another 100, I would get 900. Halfway through is 850. I look, oh, I have 848. So where am I closer to? 800. Okay. You can do the same thing for numbers 3 and 4 as a review. Let's go ahead and go to page 325 to review. Let's go ahead and estimate, which is what they're asking us to do here, rounding to the nearest hundred. I'm going to use some space over here to solve number one, and then I'm going to solve three. So 367 and 319. So first I would need to round those two numbers, and if you need to, you make that vertical number line off to the side for each one. I also can tell by the time I've been doing this so long that I know 60 is higher than 50, so this is going to go up to the next set of hundreds. I can tell by looking here that 10 is not far from 0, and so therefore this is going to go to 300. Then I'm going to add them and get an estimate of approximately 700. And this squiggly equal sign means approximately or about. Let's do the same thing for number three, except now we're rounding to the tens place. So we have 298 and we have 542. Let's go ahead and round. I'm going to look here. Okay, 90. I look next door. Oh, 
I know 98 is almost to 100, so I'm going to actually have to go up. And actually, 298 rounded to the nearest tens is actually 300 because it's close to having no tens. Then I'm going to go to 42, and I know 42 is between 40 and 50, but it's closer to 40. I'm going to go ahead and put those together, and now I'm going to add, and I'm going to get approximately 840. If you'd like to continue to practice, do 246. Um, as you go down, you do not have to use compatible numbers. That's fine. All right, let's go to the bottom here. And let's talk about our estimating with differences. So again, I'm going to work over off to the side here. We're going to do number one. So I have 527 and 341. So let's round to the hundreds place. 27 is pretty low, so this is going to round to 500. 41 is below 50, so this is going to round to 300. Now I'm ready to subtract, and I get an estimate of 200. Okay, let's do the same thing, but now we're rounding to the tens place. So 387 minus 298. 87 is between 80 and 90, and it's actually closer to 90. Don't forget your hundreds place. Oh, here's another one. 98 is between 90 and 100, and 98 is closer to 100, so this is actually going to go up. Now I'm going to subtract. I would have a zero, so I have approximately 90. Okay, do more practice as you need to. And we're going to go ahead and go to our last page here, which is talking about our two digit or two um, step word problems. Let's just solve the one at the top. Elena has $265. She buys a jacket that costs $107 and a sweater that costs $69. How much money does she have left? Now let's go back and figure it out. She has $265. So in my mind, I'm imagining this girl with that much money in her wallet. She buys a jacket. So if I buy a jacket, I have to pay for it, which means my money comes out. I'm going to subtract up here, and I know I'm going to be subtracting 107 she also buys a sweater that costs $69. So not only did I buy the jacket, but I bought a sweater. So before I figure out how much she has left, I need to figure out how much she spent. How much money did she give to the cashier to buy her stuff? So let's draw our bar diagram first. On the left, let's put our jacket. It cost $107. And on the right, let's put our sweater that was $69. She has expensive taste. And what we're trying to find is how much did she spend altogether? So I'm going to show my work off to the side because we always want to show our work. 9 plus 7 or 7 plus 9 is 16. I put my 6 in the 1's place and I carry my 10 to the 10's place for 16. 10 plus 0 plus 60, or 1 plus 6, is 7 or 70. And then there's only one set of 100. So she spent $176 at the store. Now let's get ready to figure out how much does she have left, which means I'm going to subtract. I have 265. Okay. I've spent 176. How much do I have left? Let's go ahead and line up our subtraction problem. I have five. I cannot take away six because there's not enough. So I borrow from my tens and I now have five tens. I carry my stick of tens apart and cut it into cubes. And each of those cubes of 10 is now added to my one. So now I have 15 ones. Now I can subtract. 15 minus 6 is going to give me 7, or 9, excuse me. Now I come over to the tens place. Uh-oh, I have 50. Can I take 70 away? Oh, no, I cannot. So now I'm going to the hundreds place, and I take a group of 100 away, leaving me with one group of 100. I cut my hundreds into tens and add them to my five tens already. 
So now I have 150 tens. So 15 now minus 7 is going to give me 8. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So how much money does she have left? She has $89. So boys and girls, use this as a review. Go back and check and complete as much as you need to um, before you take your test on topic eight.